Ah, ha, 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 ha. Oh. I hit that special spot. That beautifully special spot right there in your neck. You get it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's better than an orgasm. I'm always on the back foot. You already know what that is. What's up, guys? Shooter here, Mike the Viking. And today, we're talking about gaming as medicine for depression. Now, of course, I got this, this idea for this video from last night's Video Game Awards, uh, where one of the big prevalent messages during the awards was that gaming can be used as medicine for depression. And I don't disagree whatsoever. I agree with that completely. A lot of people with depression who game use gaming as an escape. That's the whole point of gaming. That's, it's, it's quite funny that giant studios and stuff like that are kind of just recognizing it now. Now, of course, stuff like Call of Duty you know, or, or Battlefield. Of course, those aren't for escaping depression. Those are for fun. You play multiplayer games or, you know, shooter games for fun, just for a good time. Now, there, of course, there are competitive players, but I want to talk about the games that I, myself, specifically use to escape my depression. Now, <clears throat> Uh, the very first few games I played, I actually remember I was very, very young. Uh, I started out on the PlayStation 1 with um, Crash Bandicoot and Tomb Raider 2. Those were the, the two games that my, uh, the, well, I think he also had Spyro. My stepfather had on his PlayStation 1. And that was, whew, it was young but I remember it. I remember not being able to do anything in any of them. I was bad. You know, I, of course, I was four, three, four years old at the time. Eh, it was just games. But um, I ended up playing a lot of games in, in my younger, younger days. And, well, childhood days. Like, child, child. Um, and with that, you know, there was stuff uh, specifically, it was mainly what your your family played. I was the first grandchild, so there, it, there was no kind of like hand-me-down system for me. It was all the adults in my family played this stuff. So there was, you know, of course my grandmother had, uh, my grandmother and my mother after the PlayStation 1, they were both uh, on Nintendo 64, and that moved on to GameCube. Um... My actual first system for myself was the original Xbox, the Duke. That was my first full-on system. But going back to the Nintendo 64 and the Nintendo GameCube, mainly what we played was stuff like um, Donkey Kong, obviously. Super Mario 64 was my... That was my game. That, that was like the first real game that I got into. And I didn't understand it yet. You know, I just thought, once again, it was just fun. Um, then, and of course, I was introduced to some things at a young age that I should not have been playing to begin with. Um, which one of my earliest memories in gaming was Conker's Bad Fur Day on the Nintendo 64. My aunt had that. And I just absolutely adored the stupidity and the parody of that game itself. That game was just... It was dumb. <laughs> but it was so much fun. And then... On the GameCube, it, it was focused a lot on Mario Golf. There was a lot of competition for our family there with Mario Golf. Because we always wanted to play against each other and, and see who was better. And of course, as you know, the kids who were old enough to be playing at that time, we did not know what we were doing whatsoever. No idea. Just no clue. Just, okay, so 
swing the, 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 the golf club and, and why did I miss? Why can't I hit? Why did it go there? And, and, and that's the thing. As kids, you got to teach them. You, you got to help them and stuff. And so I got my actual first system. I do believe I was 11 or 12 at the time when I got the Duke. And the games I got with it uh, from my mother, I think well, it was from my grandmother mainly, was uh, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer game. Because I was into Buffy the Vampire Slayer, like, a lot. I was that edgy, try-to-be-goth-slash-emo kid. That was me. I was into Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and the other game she got me was Prince of Persia Warrior Within. And let me tell you about that game. Uh, you were cutting heads off of monsters. There was blood. There was guts. When it started, there was straight up booty in a thong. And it was like, it was like, when I, when I say thong, I mean, when this game opened, 11 year old me was like, shooing. It was not good. <laughs> it's definitely not something you should hand your children. But it was my first real foray into being a gamer. Um, and that was specifically because that game was fully about the, the escapism for me. I loved Prince of Persia Warrior Within. It was bloody. It was ridiculous. Uh, not only that, that it had a monster in it called the Duhaka. And when the Duhaka came after you, the screen would turn black and white and it would play I Stand Alone by Godsmack. And you could not tell me that that was the epitome of like edge. That was, we were on the end of the knife. It was beautiful. I loved it. And man, I was a weird kid. Uh, of course, you know the rest of my story. So you know exactly why I was weird. I didn't have a choice. So <clears throat> that's my first real foray into escaping into a game. And I, I did. You know, the times that I got to play it, which of course this was around the time that I was living with my father. So it was not very often it would be when he would leave or he would go somewhere somebody in the family would allow me to sit down you know get out of the corner put some clothes on play the game he'll be back in two or three hours when you just be back in the corner when he gets back you know and it was stuff like that just make sure you act like you never moved and that's that's the thing i can say that now there were a few people in the vicinity when i was living with my father that when he was gone would allow me to be a kid again. And I can't help but if they're watching this, say thank you, you know, for allowing me to actually escape the hell that he put me through every now and then. So, <clears throat> uh, around this time, I kind of, I, I quit gaming for a while. Uh, I was still on and off. I was still, you know, playing certain things and doing stuff like that. Uh, then my second um my second gaming system was the Xbox 360. I originally started out as an Xbox kid. I, I loved Xbox. Xbox introduced me to a lot of the games that I ended up absolutely loving. And that machine is, you know, the Xbox, the Duke, and the 360 are nothing but nostalgia for me now. They are just beautiful, just absolutely amazing. And with the 360, that introduced me to uh, stuff like Bioshock, stuff like Gears of War. I was never a Halo guy. I, I It was okay, but it just wasn't my thing. Uh, Gears of War, I was all about that, though. Gears of War was, was, like, fully into that. Bioshock was my second, like, real push into escapism into a game. Because Bioshock, while being a first-person shooter, had so much of the elements of a RPG for you to dive into. You really felt like you were in Rapture. Like you were going through this. You were fighting Splicers. You were dealing with big daddies and little sisters. And I absolutely adored Bioshock, especially Part 1. Part 2 felt more mm, like a just go through it and shooty shoot. That's the deal. The, the story was kind of gone there in part two. 
but I still absolutely adored it because it still played and felt the same as the first one. Now, uh, Gears of War, I was into mainly because I just, I thought Marcus was uh, the epitome of like, what is man? Man is Marcus Phoenix. That's man. And that's how I felt. And I, I, I loved it. There was, there was no way around that. But on the 360, I'm introduced to my favorite game of all time, which is a game called Brutal Legend. And I can tell you at least 70% of the gaming community has never even heard of this game. And if you have not, if you have no clue what this is, please go look at previews. Please go look at playthroughs. This was a real-time strategy slash hack and slash slash RPG slash just metal soundtrack racing. Like, this game had everything. There was, uh, it's basically, it's fronted by Jack Black playing a character named Eddie. And this game is absolutely beautiful. If, if you are a metalhead, if, if you like any kind of rock and roll, any kind of metal, anything like that, please do yourself the honor of checking this game out. You deserve this honor. This is my favorite game of all time. Brutal Legend is what I would consider to be a cult classic now. It has a huge cult following of the people who loved it. I think the only reason it failed is there wasn't much advertisement for this game, and the advertisement that did exist for this game completely lied. It made it seem like it was straight up hack and slash, something like Devil May Cry or God of War, and it just was not. At all. <laughs> that was... There was... N no, not even close. <coughs> But once again, my favorite game of all time, and that really was a straight-up escape for me. That wasn't the feeling of escaping. That wasn't a slight escape. That game was a complete escape. It had all the music that I loved. It had a story that I absolutely adored. It was stupid and fun and dark and gritty. And it was just a hell of a good time. Now... That game, I've actually I've loved it so much that I've I've rebought the game every time I've lost it. Uh, going on about four to five times now, I've rebought that game every time, <clears throat> and I'm I'm praying and hoping one day it gets a, a remaster or a remake because it absolutely deserves it, or even a sequel. A sequel would be amazing. It just absolutely deserves it. But. Around this time of my life, you know what I'm going through. You know who I am. You know the things I'm dealing with. Of course, by the time I have my Xbox 360, I'm already disconnected from my father. I'm living life uh, at my grandmother's home. You know, and anything that I really enjoyed as a kid that I got, any kind of game station or game console, any kind of game station. Yep, that's when Xbox and PlayStation come together. Um, but when I'm... You know, in my, if, when I'm enjoying these games, there's stuff that's bought for me by, by my grandmother. That woman, I think she somehow knew about the life that I had, about the life that I was living, even if I wasn't saying it out loud. And her biggest thing was just to get my mind on other things, to, to get me away from that. <clears throat> and I can't give her anything but love for that. So... Because of my grandmother, I'm introduced to a lot of these games that help me escape. They help me think differently and see things differently. And I want to tell you that, yes, 100% games can be used as medicine for depression. It's not a joke. Think about the game you love the most. Think about certain moments in it. It could be Red Dead 2, the hunting, the fishing. Nothing to do with other players, just you. Going fishing, going hunting. can be some of the most relaxing things you can do. When you work constantly and you can't actually do these things, or you live somewhere where you can't do these things all the time, doing that can be one of the most relaxing and beneficial things on the planet. It's like, okay, this is what I want to do. I can't really do it right now, but I can kind of live through this you know, this version of it. Um, 
And, and certainly for me, Red Dead 2 is definitely one of them. I love to play it specifically just by myself. Go hunting, go fishing, enjoy myself. Um, another big one for me was uh, Skyrim. The Elder Scrolls, which I am certainly a fan of the whole series. I've played Morrowind and Oblivion and now Skyrim five times. Um, for the five times it's been put out. Let's be real here. If there isn't a release for PS5, I'll be amazed. But, uh, yes. It's just, Skyrim itself was just a game you could sit back. It's not too heavy. You just play along. You just have fun with the story. Or do what a lot of us did. You had a bad day. You scum save. And then you head through, and the next six hours, you just murder the entire world of Tamriel. You just, you just take it out. You, you just you beat it down. I was actually, I was so bad once. I, I feel like, like this is, I had had such a bad day. And I don't really remember what the day was, what, what the issue was. I came home, and when I got home, I got onto Skyrim. And I went about taking and killing every person I could in the vicinity. And spelling out my name with their bodies. I said that out loud. Okay, I'm demented. But. So. Basically my suggestion is here is. Find something that makes you happy. Find something that makes you love. If you're a gamer. COD. You know. Uh. Mm, Stuff like that, stuff like Battlefield, Call of Duty, uh, Fortnite, and stuff like that, isn't really going to give you the relaxation that something slowed down and something easier would do. Of course, that's competitive. It's supposed to be. Competitive is, is what that is. That's not saying there's anything wrong with those games. It's just saying that it's not going to give you the idea of escapism that mainly an RPG would do. And RPGs are made specifically for that. It is a role-playing game. It is for you to immerse yourself into this character, become this character, and live in this world. And that's a beautiful thing about being an RPG gamer. So, having said all of that, this is what I want you to do. If you are a gamer... Find out the things that relax you the most. Find out the things that make you happiest. And find games with that in it. There, there's such a vast array and, and wide collection of games to choose from. You don't have to bog yourself down with one thing. You can literally use games to set yourself free. To escape from the life that you live, that you go through every day. Having said that, you know what time it is. So, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, what did something else? Watching. Yeah, thank you for watching. You press play on this, so you're a hero. Yeah. And remember, if no one else is going to tell you today, I sure am. I love you, and you deserve every right to be happy. This is Mike the Viking. I'm out. Mwah.